Thing three is the markets and what we have to focus on there. And our next guest says, you might have to brace yourself in these markets. The recent rallies bought the S brought the S&P 500 back from its low, of course, on March 8th. We've got the Fed to contend with, the growth outlook that is still unclear. 22V Research founder Dennis DeButcher says returns will be violently flat. How's, there for, how's that for an oxymoron for you? Until we have more clarity, Dennis is with us now. Dennis, good morning. Um, explain to good us morning. what you mean when you talk about this violently flat backdrop. Yeah, good question. So uh, we'll start with the upside. It seems very, pretty clear to us that the Fed needs to ratchet down demand growth. Uh, demand growth can slow you know, on its own, maybe because of demand destruction as it relates to commodity prices. But either way, economic growth is likely to slow over the next six to nine months. Uh, inflation needs to come down. One of the consequences of inflation coming down is pricing power being weaker. I mean, the way you have pricing power is because companies uh, have higher margins. So that will start to reverse because the Fed is going to demand it. Could happen naturally, but again, the way they demand it is through tighter financial conditions. So being long the market for breakouts, when you know that the Fed is gonna be working against that because stocks are a large part of financial conditions is difficult unless you can make you know, a very hard supply constraint, a supply improvement uh, argument. On the other side, you have to be pretty confident in a recession and a significant detrending of earnings. Trend is really important point here to get real negative on the market about around 4,200. And the reason is you still have these monopolies uh, in the US that return boatloads of cash to shareholders. So if growth is slowing, inflation's lower, you're obviously gonna be capped on rates to a certain extent. And if you're capped on rates, then your cash return yields in the market do look pretty attractive. Again, assuming no severe recession, down in the 4,200 level. So that is how we get to a, you know, a violently flat kind of call. Dennis, I know you watch the markets very closely uh, day to day. Now, we're coming up against first quarter earnings season. Inflation, very hot. How do you think that impacted companies' earnings in the first quarter? And, and do you expect a, a market correction when these numbers start to hit? I do expect a market correction uh, later on this year related to numbers hitting. For now, um, keep this in mind. I think this is a not something that's fully internalized by investors. If we have a lot of inflation in one queue, that's good for earnings. That means companies are passing things along, right? The problem is when wages stay sticky high and inflation at a top line level starts to slow, that's where you get your margin squeeze. So I don't think one queue is the negative catalyst uh, for the overall market. It might be for certain internals, <clears throat> like your riskier stocks. So if you overweight quality through one Q, but for the overall market, remember inflation just means profit margins. I mean, at the same time, Dennis, if we do see wage growth remaining sticky while top line inflation comes down, isn't that better for consumption, for spending power on the part of, of individual consumers? It is, uh, it just, uh, a matter of how much growth needs to slow for that inflation to come down. So that's kind of like your two-step. Ultimately, it's a good thing, certainly on a longer-term basis. Uh, but as it happens, the reason why inflation comes down is really important. And that's kind of the underlying of your question, why is inflation coming down? And this will be the market call. So we'll look really stupid if inflation can come down without the Fed having to slow demand growth. But if demand growth has to slow, i.e. consumption slowing to lower inflation, then that's the process you're going to have to go through over the next you know, six to nine months, which will be negative for earnings. Dennis, your mention of a market correction uh, later this year, is that the byproduct of what could be five or six rate hikes from the Fed starting to hurt corporate America? Yes, and I would believe it's going to happen. It's going to happen in the next you know, three to four months because uh, there's pretty high odds that we're going to go 50, 50, and 50 from the Fed. So bang, bang, bang. And then from there, you probably gets a little easier because you might step down back to 25. So the issue is going to be the, the next three you know, meetings that will take you through the end of July. And um, I think it's going to be a pretty decent tightening of financial conditions because that's what the Fed, the Fed wants. Once we get through that, we'll see where the growth outlook is settling down. We'll see where the inflation outlook is likely to settle down. And from there, I think it'll get um, probably a lot more I'd be more positively inclined, but there's just so much uncertainty between now and then. It's just difficult to say, hey, just chase stocks along from here. 
Dennis, um, I don't know if it, you're new from, from here, you're doing sector work, but I am curious where you think there are places to maybe ride all of this out while, it, while it's unfolding. Yeah, large cap tech for sure. So that's going to be your monopolistic tech companies that I already mentioned. So uh, the Microsofts of the world, just to give viewers an example, defensives will be more interesting. So that's your uh, healthcare names, uh, pharma in particular, um, utilities to uh, maybe a little lesser extent staples. Uh, from a factor point of view, it's basically companies that have very high profitability, very high earnings quality, um, large size is, a, is something that you want to be more inclined to. And the deeper cyclicals, and this might be a little controversial relative to what people are saying, I think come under pressure. Um, it's really hard for us to believe that energy will keep on outperforming if demand growth is going to slow. I get the supply arguments, and certainly there's a ton of uncertainty as it relates to Russia, but commodity prices in general are going to come down if demand growth is slowing around the world, and particularly in the U.S. So, Dennis, where do you fall uh, in this debate right now that a recession might take hold later this year or early next year? I think the odds of that are extremely low. So where I fall in the debate is I think that is way overblown. And you see it in market pricing. Uh, the short curves, so like your three-month bill through 18 months is at a record steepness. So, yeah, the long curves are flat or slightly negative, but near-term recession risk, whether you see that in credit or other measures like I just mentioned, is extraordinarily low. So I don't see the I, – I think it's very hard for the Fed to raise rates enough to cause a recession. It would have to happen, to, you know, based on some shock that, you know, I'm not – you know, none of us could really call for. So just – very low odds. I think next year, and maybe the latter part of next year, is when recession risk is probably above where consensus is. Let's hope that that shock doesn't happen. Dennis, thank you so much for yep. being here. It's good to see you. Dennis DeButcher, no 22V Research Founder.